You might have think, well, Scott, you've already showed us the webpack. What else is there left? Okay, if you have the webpack, that's great, but there's still some more goodies I want to show you all. Some, some jewels, some nuggets, some gems uh, that I'm going to drop. So just pick them up. Um, so, webpack config. Anybody have any questions in here about what's going on? Anything. It can be simple. Don't, nothing, there's no stupid question. Okay. So remember, web package job. A great way to figure out what a tool is doing is to go see the result of what it did. And if you just go look in a bundle.js, you can see what Webpack did. Like, not only did it put all these comments in here, which is awesome, right? I don't know, what, you know, it did all that. But obviously, you can see here it's it's creating common JS here. It's polyfilling common JS. This is common JS right here. So that's what it's doing. This is really the main reason we use Webpack. Um, the other stuff is just awesome. The the building. And then the result of our code is here. Browser ready, ES5. So that's, that's just a great way. And then, of course, it also put in this source map uh, linking right here, which is awesome, because I told it to. Really great. And it links to this source map right here. Oh, don't look at it. OK. So that's what Webpack does. So let's just go over again what's going on in here. And then this time, I'll go into more detail about the individual properties. <coughs> so DevTool. There's like 30 different options you can put here. It's ridiculous. And they all do different things. They all have different build times. They all have different settings, and they're made for different environments. Source maps is exactly what it sounds like. This is telling Webpack, hey, create a source map for my files. And that's what it did. It created bundle.js.map right here. That's what it did. There's other ones like eval, where it will, do a, it will literally wrap your code in an eval and use an inline source map that way. Um, for performance reasons, you probably understand that's probably not good for production, but maybe good for development. I don't know. But there's tons of other options that Webpack offers for DevTool. I encourage you to experiment with them and whatnot. I usually just keep it on source maps, unless it just gets so big that it just takes so long to generate the source maps, and I'm just like, all right, I need to invest in a different option. And they have different options for that. Debug, that's exactly what it sounds like. Um, entry, again, this is the entry, the root module for our, our module. Webpack, you can have more than one entry. In our case, we only have one. But you can say, hey, you know, there are going to be three different module dependency trees in this application. This one starts here, this one starts here, this one starts here. You can totally do that with Webpack, which will also generate three different outputs. And you can do that too. Um, so the, the syntax for that is really not that difficult. You would just put an array here like this, and you'd put the names that you want. And then down here in file name, you would have, you get access to like the hash and stuff like that, and you can name them however you want. You can also use an object here and specific, explicitly name them the way you want them to, and then you can reference them down here in the output. So there's so many ways you can do it. You can also do like code sharing, where it's like, all right, we have two different module trees, but we have, they're also sharing this common library right here, so we're going to uh, allow them to share it, but only load it once. It's pretty cool. Or you could even say, um, I want to use some of these modules from this module tree on this module tree and split the code. It's pretty cool. Webpack is like ridiculous. I'll admit the learning curve for Webpack is just monstrous. It's crazy. Like, it's really nasty. I'm not gonna lie. Like compared to Gulp or even Grunt, it's just like, oh, I don't know. Like you got to be some type of scientist to understand what's going on. So but how should we approach it? How should you approach it? Uh, the way I approach it is I only use it for things like this. Um, but like again, it's, it's capable of everything. But usually when it gets to the point where I don't know how to do it and I can't figure out, I use gold. Like I just do it in gold. And that's what I do, me personally. Should I invest time and learn Webpack more? Probably. But uh, I'm not a scientist, so. Uh, is there a, you said that, uh, is there a similarity between G JSPM? Yeah, so JSPM uses System.js as a module loader. And System.js is actually like to the spec, the way modules are supposed to be, ES6 modules. Um, it, it, and System.js uses the ES6 polyfill shim. So technically, it is the way that modules are meant to be, whereas Webpack actually just converts your syntax to common JS. So if you learn, if you learn learning Webpack, there's not going to be a lot of carryover in your knowledge to JSPM? 
No, okay. not really. JSP, like I said, so System JS is compared to Webpack where they both bundle your code, but JSPM takes System JS and then it attaches a uh, package manager to it that can fetch packages from GitHub, Bower, uh, uh, NPM, of course, and any other repository that you want. It even, ha it even has its own repository where it fetches stuff. That's JSPM. It's just like the jack of all trades right. for building applications. It's just, as far as features, it's just not there yet for Webpack. Like Webpack is just exploding, mainly because of the React and stuff. So there's so much stuff involved with it. Where JSPM is, is pretty good, and it does a good job. It just hasn't gotten there yet. But it will be the standard, and I'm glad that Angular is supporting it, because it's, it's the tool to use for sure. What's Eventually. it lacking that's holding it back at the moment? I think it's just the community. The community behind Webpack is just so far greater, Like again, mainly because of React. It's just more people are developing on it, so it's expanding. Webpack 2 is on the horizon. JSPM was created by Guy Bedford. It was one guy who made this, and he also made SystemJS, so it's just like one person doing this. And then you know, he's, he's got community behind it too, but not like Webpack does. So I really think that's just a big issue. But as the modules and stuff become native in a browser, I think JSPM would just take over. Because it, there is a different, there's a small difference in how you load modules with JSPM versus uh, Webpack. So it's, it's kind of tricky, but um, it is a standard. So eventually people will have to adopt it. Um, this resolve here is actually pretty cool. Uh, we have this extensions here with, you know, tell the Webpack like, hey, you know, these are the files we're gonna use. There's another trick we can do here. Um, and you can say like, um, what is it, root? And you can give it like a root. In this case, I'll say app. And then now I don't have to use relative paths inside of my app. So for instance, if I had a, oh, really? Oh, oh my god. I know. I, what is going on? OK, what, well, let's just not click on that file. But. <laughs> <laughs> what, what's happening is this root right here is saying, hey, I want to resolve all module imports to this path. So therefore, you don't have to do um, relative paths anymore inside your, your imports inside your module. You can just, they all resolve to this. But I've had conflicts with TypeScript, Linter, and this. So because TypeScript, Linter will look ahead, or I'm sorry, the TypeScript tools will look ahead to find the right path for you. And because you're not using relative paths, it'll freak out. It's like, oh, I can't find it. So you'll get TypeScript will freak out, but it'll, it'll load. So I'm sure there's a way to fix that. You can tell TypeScript, like, hey, this is also the relative path. But uh, I haven't dug into that. But just a little nugget. Um, I think that's still an open issue for TypeScript. Is it? So uh, there's a, an issue open to add mappings for search okay. files. Yeah, that would be awesome. Um, output. Again, path, file name. So loaders, again, this is where you load up your loaders, right? You, you say any, any module, any file that matches this, regex, pass it through this, excluding this. You can also type in include, which is the inverse of exclude. So you can include additional files or file or folders or whatever. Um, and you can also pipe in different uh, loaders here. All right, so you can say exclamation, and you can put like, I don't know, a raw loader here. And the way it's going to work is, it's actually going to read it from right to left, and not left to right. It's weird. Uh, but don't use a raw loader here. A raw loader just brings it in as raw text. So this is how you pipe in additional loaders into Webpack. Just like in Go, you have like different plugins streaming to each other. It's very similar here. So you can do that. You would see something like this if you had like, style, like if you were using style, um, SAS, and you piped it through the SAS compiler first, and then you piped it through the style uh, loader, and then you piped it through the raw loader, so you can bring it as raw text or something like that. So that's where you would normally see that. Uh, dev server, again, this is just telling the dev server, passing options to the, the global dev server. And plugins is really awesome. This is where you can add things to Webpack, like Uglify, um, uh, HTML templates, a notifier that ties into uh, the notification system in Mac when your bundle's complete, all types of plugins you can put here. Um, so there's tons, tons of them. They're completely different than loaders, though. They're not the same. Loaders transform your files. Plugins just add functionality to Webpack and may also transform files. Uh, 